Hello and welcome to The Smitty Show, episode number three. I sit down with my good friend Jesse Sitterud and we discuss tax strategy. Don't pay that government more than you should. We also talk about golf. We talk about what it takes as far as mindset and drive to be successful and make millions, at least some things that he's seen from his investors and things I've seen from my investors. So we cover a wide gamut in this episode. Really hope you like it. Big thanks to my man, Jesse. Hope you enjoy the episode. We were introduced by uh, a mutual friend. I'm trying to think, did we golf together first before we even knew anything? Or was, we'll get, I want to get into my problem yeah. that you helped me solve. <laughs> I, I, I think we did golf together. I think that's where we met. Okay. Um, I think. I think we met on the golf course. I think there was a, a thread that, hey, you know, got, got one of my good buddies coming out. This was from our mutual friend. And, okay. You know, it took off from there. Okay. We, the, the bromance started the on the bromance, golf course. They, and it was bromance at first sight. It was. I think. It was. Your shoe game's always on point. No, I, I, I do my best. <laughs> but the, the other control thing, the controllables. Yeah, exactly. But uh, leave leave what will happen. Uh, you can't you can't control everything. So right. uh, so 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 take care of what you can. Well, no, I think the the funny thing was what one lesson I've learned in life is that when you get that text message that says, "Hey, we need one more," you always say yes. When it comes to golf, because as soon as you're the guy that doesn't, that says, no, hey, I'm too busy, then those invites start to dwindle a little bit. So I've always been say yes to every golf invite, every, hey, we got tickets to the game, we need one more. No doubt. You got to be ready for it. You have to. You got to be yep. ready for it. Yeah, be that guy. So that worked out well for me, because uh, I think it was a similar situation to that, or maybe he was just introducing us, but either way. So, the, so tell me... Because I did come to you with a, with a big problem, and yeah. it was awesome the way that you and your crew solved it. But yeah. maybe just for introduction's sake, tell us the quick who you are, what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our our game really is is the wealth management space. Um, so we help higher net worth clients to manage their wealth, and and a big um, specific focus of ours is tax strategy. Um, okay. Tax reduction. Um, you know, making sure that uh, that people understand that a lot of the taxes that that they pay are voluntary and they don't even know it, right? right? And so it's helping um, individuals understand that there are options to to especially high net worth folks to to bring down their tax brackets um, and therefore have more money to invest in what they want to invest in and and build their wealth. So um, you know, you coming out of a, a of a business, um, you know, out of California and and having some opportunities there, um, you know, I think was kind of our introduction. But um, that's that's kind of where we play. Um, it's 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 mostly higher net worth. There's a lot of business owners. Um, we kind of have a niche with um, uh, professional athletes and coaches, and, and also some uh, some college coaches, um, you know, across the country. And it's a fun space. Our deal is we like to work with people we that we like, and and uh, and then if we can help them, if those two things mix, then you know, generally we'll we'll have a great time. I have been. You don't share who your clients are, but I have met few through. You know, we maybe yeah. we golf together, or we're just introduced in, in yeah. similar settings. So um, you have some cool customers for sure. The um, me being one of them, uh, <laughs> the, the coolest. <laughs> there, uh, but you do. There are some. Uh, so I want to get to because I think it's interesting for people to hear just uh, about what you see from your clients, right? Yeah. The the type of people that they are, the type of businesses that they own, or kind of any. Yep. You probably see some commonalities, or maybe we'll just jump into that. So. So uh, I want to get to my problem, but it's it, that's a good story in itself because it personally benefited me quite a bit. But the you have clientele, uh, clients from you know lots of different backgrounds. Obviously, they're high net worth individuals. Right. So uh, and they come from business background. You have some sports background, and obviously, a lot of those people are involved in businesses and things like that. So what are some? So if you look at your your mm -hmm. customers, your clients, who? Who are these people? Meaning, what are the common threads between them? Whether it's uh, what are they doing for a living, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, is there any kind of personality traits yeah. or kind of just things that you see that are common between all of these? Yeah, not high great. Net worth individuals? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great question. I'll, I'll probably start like from from a mindset standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say um, probably the most common thing that I see. Uh, with our clients, because because all of our clients have been successful at something, right? So far as as making money, right? Success right. means a lot of things. Sure. So far as as monetarily speaking, they've had great success. Um, I'd say the number one trait that they share is focus. Okay. Right? If I'm just going going just something that's 
you know, that's controllable, um, extremely focused individuals at what they do, whether that's business, whether that's sports, whether that's managing a company, um, is that, that's something I definitely see. Mm -hmm. Um, they are, um, you know, they understand what their weaknesses are. Most of them are admittedly, Hey, I'm really bad at X, but right. I can focus on Y, and right. Y is what drives what I do. Right? It's that whole control, the controllables, yes. like we just talked about. Yep. So I see that as a common trait for sure. Um, and uh, and the second, um, you know, I, I'd say very common trait uh, in terms of just human traits is confidence. Um, there's a quiet confidence to some. There's there's right. a little louder to others. Right. Um, but it, they they all believe um, that there are going to succeed. That's the bottom line. Um, many of them, they, they just believe in their, you know, their work ethic or they believe in a certain skill they have, but ultimately they believe they're going to be, be successful. Um, something I see financially speaking, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's very common is, uh, businesses are very diverse. The way they right. earn their dollars is very diverse. Uh, so one of the fun things is you, you see that there's, there's, you know, there's a million different ways to earn a million dollars, yes. right? Yep. Um, but uh, something that's very common is almost every time, uh, matter of fact, just this morning, I, I had a, uh, a meeting with a new potential client. Mm -hmm. It was kind of the fill out process. Yeah. Um, individuals been extremely successful. And, and, and this theme repeated itself again. It was as we start talking and he's talking about what's going on, he has this almost embarrassed look come over his face and he starts to almost apologize that, God, you know, I, I'm sorry, I don't really understand what you do and how you do it and how right. it should be. And, and it's always, it's almost a, a, an apology every time of, I don't really understand how I should be investing my dollars. I don't right. understand how taxes work. And I always laugh and say, I'm glad you don't because that's why my business right. exists, right? That's exactly. why I have a job. But everyone feels apologetic. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, I always tell my clients, no, you do what you do very, very well. Right. Right. That's what gives me an opportunity to help you with the rest. Yep. And so that common theme of, Everyone, almost everyone, I can count on one hand the clients who really understood very, very deeply what we could do and how we were going to do it before, like as we were meeting. Everyone else is like, hey, you know, show us how this is going to work. Right. And there needs to be no apology. You can right. just be very good at right. what you do and engage the services of, of someone else. That's why you use a broker here, or you use a CPA here, or an attorney here. Right. Um, and so that's been a common theme, and, and uh, you know, as long as someone's teachable, um, that's a lot of fun to work with folks in that uh, type of a mindset. Yeah, no, that makes sense. We had actually, <clears throat> Brett and I were talking, and he said, there's the phrase, just mind your business. Yeah. Meaning you mind your business, Correct. and you've, it's been successful for you, that's how you've yeah. made your money thus far, and then we'll mind ours, meaning well, this is what we focus on and then so we can uh, there's a little bit of the building that team around you as well right know where your right. weaknesses are know what your strengths are know where your passion lies yep. and then build the team around you and you know for these individuals like they're minding their business right they've been right. able to be super successful in yep. what they're doing and you know when it comes to tax strategy uh, and some of these other elements that are available for them they may not be as aware so you know find those people around you don't know, try to do it all yourself is, right. is common right that uh, that definitely so I may be going a little bit into my story. Then we can no. jump back into some jump other in. things. And that was how I because I came to you. I had a liquidity event. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to retire on for forever. But I had left tech and I had a liquidity event. Well, I, I created a liquidity event for yeah. myself. I don't know that everybody was happy that I sold my sold my equity. Nothing. It was all above board and and within my rights to do. But I sold my equity in a startup that I was at. And great group of people. I just wanted to move on to yeah. to my next phase and start this business. But the the challenge was that, as, that all of those uh, earnings, some of them W two, some of them were uh, short term capital gains yep. because of the timing in which it happened. And so I was kind of trying to figure out a way because in my case it's the worst case scenario because you have the event, you've exercised, you received the money, and it's within the same year. And I at least on the surface, I was kind of distraught because I thought everything was going to be you know, taxed at the highest rates possible, which is almost 50%, right. uh, depending on, well, federal's 39, I think, and then yeah. it would have been plus whatever state that I'm in and other things that came up. So that is the pickle that I was in, and, and uh, you know, I was you know, hoping, 
mainly because not that I just wanted to hoard the money, right? I wanted to start a business. I wanted to create jobs. I wanted to do a lot of other things with right. the money as opposed to, you know, send it off to Uncle Sam. And uh, I actually heard I had an economics professor once say, it is your moral obligation to pay as little in taxes as possible. Because if you're doing that, it means that you're putting your money where the government would prefer you put your money right. because they have those incentives for, for a reason. So maybe I'll pause there. So I came to you with this dilemma and then, you know, to whatever extent I thought it was, you know, it's one of the many things that you guys do, but the strategy that we put together, I thought was pretty awesome. So uh, w- could you maybe explain a little bit about what we did and in yeah. that process? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I would, I would um, just echo what you said. Um, you know, I think when you talk about that moral and ethical obligation, it, it, it truly is going to help our country to a much greater extent and your community and obviously your local economy, even down to your family. If you're keeping ethically, right? If right. you're keeping more of those dollars instead of handing them over to the federal right. government. I, I don't think there's many people listening or watching this that would agree that the federal government is the best entity to be managing money, right? Right. right. Um, trillions of dollars in national deficit. Do right. we really want to hand them more? Right. Um, as opposed to, okay, let's, let's you know, we're, we, we live in the greatest country on earth. We've right. got our problems, but man, they are lesser right. than everywhere else you could A lot live. to be grateful for. Right. A lot to be grateful for. You know, we, we, we pay our share. And after that, man, if, if you can keep them and use them to better your life and employ someone else and, and feed the, the, the local economy that you're in, um, you know, so much the better. Right. And so with, with your situation, and, and, and I remember having that conversation um, about worrying about losing half of this and, God, is there anything we can do? And so, right. you know, using um, a, a uh, maybe give you a 10,000 foot view here, but using a charitable donation strategy that we've utilized um, for years, mm-hmm. um, you know, very common to those who have um, donated, uh, you know, something that, that, that you're giving away and you're giving it to, um, you know, a charity or a thrift store or whatever it is. You've got the couch and you take it down and you right. drop it off and the individual there says, hey, would you like a receipt? And most often we don't take it because it's not going to mean enough to our taxes, right. to our bottom line to worry about it. But that same law, that that uh, charitable no- donation law under the IRS allows um, for a much broader opportunity. And, and, and in your case, um, you know, we, we, we have had uh, uh, you know basically some minerals that that, that we'd been able to purchase um, a number of years ago uh, that satisfied the IRS uh, demands to be seasoned long enough and allowed you to essentially come in buy rights to that that uh, to some of those minerals and then donate them uh, to a charity and in so doing because of the um, the stated value mm-hmm. of of what you'd bought and what we'd purchased it for you were able to get a multiple um, on your taxes and and bring your tax bracket down but probably two tax brackets overall and um, you, you did two things in our opinion, right? One, you benefit, benefited a charity. It's a stroke victims charity right. um, that we've aligned with and, and helping those families. And then you also kept a whole lot. So that money went there. Right. And then you were able to keep net a whole lot more in your pocket to start this new business and right. to, to do with it what you wanted. And, and again, that's just, we tell people there's no way that everyone out there on the street or, or that's running the business, because you talked about you're minding your own business, you're not going to know about those opportunities or those those available situations within these t- the tax code. Right. The tax code changes literally every year. Right. right? And, right. and uh, you know, one of my partners in particular has his ear to the ground right. every time, goes to conferences every other month on every legislative change. Right. And, we can provide that service to a lot of our clients because we do know what's available. We do know what's ethical. We know what's what 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 waters we shouldn't be swimming in, and and what is um, safe. Right. And we can bring those to the consumer uh, because it's just there's no way you would know otherwise. So yep. uh, that's 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 a huge value add that we're really glad we can bring to um, to a lot of people. Yeah, it was it was absolutely incredible. Uh, I you know it was almost uh, I you know, again I thought I was just stuck. You know I'd heard mm-hmm. of other uh, tax incentives mm-hmm. through other things, usually though through whether it's uh, long-term capital gains yep. or maybe through real estate or there are some other nice things that are out there and you guys are versed in all of those things as well. But the, I thought that I was like in the one scenario that there's no hope for yep. and uh, no, it, it helped out a lot. And yeah, on that point, it's like, I didn't go buy a Ferrari. I don't, yep. uh, didn't go buy a Rolex when I was on a W2, you yep. know, I, I did, I'd never bought a Ferrari, but when I was on a W2, I bought a Rolex thinking that was like yep. what wealth meant. Right. Yep. And, uh, you know, but since then, it's like no. Now I haven't. I, you know, I've been doing this now. I've left 
and started this own business. It's been over a year. Haven't paid myself a dollar yet, but we yeah. have, you know, we have a team of five now and things like that. And like, that's what we want to do. So, uh, and you helped enable that. Right. Yeah. So, which is, which is awesome. And I'm, I'm still pumped for now because of the efficiency of our government. I'm still waiting on that return, uh, <laughs> right. to come back to me. Right. Uh, I check, uh, I, I check every now and then I'm sure it'll come, but, um, yeah, just 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 as a as a stat, I, sh- I should have come prepared with the stat, but they are, it's it's multiple millions. So they're, they're, you can actually track um, where the where the IRS is on tasks behind, and they are uh, over two million tasks behind schedule right now. Oh jeez. Um, so. Yeah, th- things are slow, right? Is that why? Uh, uh, didn't they say they're hiring like another eighty thousand IRS are. agents or something like that? They are, like that. you know, with all the stimulus packages that happen and yeah. and you know the the COVID handouts, um, yeah. you know, many of which they're going to audit and it's, that are they're going to be coming down the pike. Um, they're just so far behind. Yeah, and it's it's a slow moving entity anyway, and it's. It's just kind of a mess. Yeah. Well, I'm in the middle of it. So anybody there at the offices, look up. Justin think, Smitty Smith. That's right. I don't think it says Smitty anywhere on my uh, <laughs> should paperwork. But, um, yeah. So yeah. So they're clearly behind, and but that's okay. But I'm sure it'll happen. Yep. Um, they've been pretty consistent about paying me returns when I have them, so I'll I'm not, not too worried there. The uh, so yeah, that was great, and I loved how you guys were super professional about it, and it just gave me ease, right? Because you also had great referrals for other folks that helped on other aspects yeah. of preparing my taxes right. and things like that. So. Uh, it, it it was really awesome. So it goes to building that 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 team around you right. of of experts. So let's talk about some more of the similarities because you did yep. mention one thing that that piqued my curiosity. So we did the kind of the mindset yeah. aspect, you yeah. know, a, a lot of focus, understanding your strengths, your weaknesses. Right. What you mentioned though is it seemed like a lot of that. You mentioned a lot of them are business owners, and I just mm-hmm. did a little take where I'll sit here and do a. I, th- I think I'm calling it Smitty Streams, or just kind of sit and just kind of rant for a little bit. Yeah. But one thing I noticed. Is I was talking, I was kind of thinking of salespeople because that's where the, that's what I used to do right. when I was managing teams and, and and running sales orgs. And what I realized is they put in all this work, they get the W two, and a lot of them, their goal is like, look, the only way I'm going to make money is if I kind of rise up the ranks of the corporate ladder. Yep. And then now, as I look at who our investors are, mm-hmm. and then this is where you mentioned your a lot of your clients are business owners, and you know we have we have some common interest in, in who these people are. What I realize is not a lot of them are sitting on a W two currently. Right. Uh, maybe some, right? Right. But there's very rarely is that the case. And and some people, are, you know, I guess you could call like a professional athlete on a yep. on a salary yeah, in some sure. sense. But maybe different from the rest of us. But a lot of these folks are not coming from you know, hey, I was I just grinded it out in the in the corporate uh, in the corporate world till I got to the top of that pyramid right. and then I got my payments. I, I I don't see a lot of those people as the ones investing with us. But I'd be I'd be curious to hear what what are some of those similarities that you're seeing as far as okay the companies are different but what are the you know what are the similarities with what they're doing for work yeah that that's that that, that's a that's a great uh, question and and i would agree um we really don't i i I have we have uh, look at our client base we certainly have those who who have climbed ranks and are now the ceo of this larger company Mm -hmm. but by and large um that's not the case right the case is um you know someone's got out there and hustled started up a company or joined one a little bit later and got an equity position or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's been, you know, building and, and scrapping and just hustling to build a, you know, what maybe would call a, a, a smaller mid-sized company, which is relative, right? Because those companies can still be tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, just right. not maybe the B. Right. Um, but, but not a lot of climbing anymore. Co- the corporate Everything. I mean, the corporate ladder um, doesn't really even look like it used to. I mean, there used to be a corporate ladder leaned up against every business building in the right. United States. Right. And by and large, those ladders have fallen from those buildings, and and it's just a different. Uh, it's a different era we live in, right? Yeah. Um, some of the some of the, you know you, you got large cities. Uh, you know, New York City, a lot of corporate still going on. Right. Um, certainly places in California, right. but there's a lot of other places. You know, we we're we're having this conversation here in Utah, one of the strongest fastest growing economies let's go utah right let's go utah that 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 that's not a common thing to to right. be there, there's a lot of entrepreneurialism there's a yeah. lot of business that's just being built and uh um and i think it's a great thing i think similarities in terms of of you know how uh, how these are being built and where the successes are are coming from right. um is is it's really um i think what you were mentioning what i've seen is it's people realizing where their sweet spot is 
and where their weaknesses are and building really, really good uh, partnerships or teams, yeah. right? Um, I always call it the Henry Ford principle, right? Henry Ford um, said many, many times, and I, I, I love it, I refer to it all the time, is you know, I don't have to know everything, right? right? I'm not the best at everything. However, right. I know someone who is an expert on that one, right. two, three, four things that I'm not, yep. right? Um, that's my mentality. That's the way I work in our office. I know where uh, where I'm good and where I'm not. Right. Um, but we make sure that we have those relationships with with all the other pieces. And I've seen that same thing in those who have been successful in their business is recognizing that early on and bringing either partner partners or employees, um, you know, helpers, whatever it is. Right. That that can um, t- can fill that spot, right? Yep. There's a there's a great book out there. Um, maybe you've read it called Rocket Fuel. Um, I've not read it. No. Uh, great book. It, it, you know, especially if you're building an organization. Um, you know, talking about visionaries and implementers. And I may be I may, may be using my own vocabulary for the implementer, okay. but sure. but basically that that those who are you know it's it's the it's the Steve Jobs and the Wozniaks, right? Right. Yeah. Jobs was the yeah. visionary. He he had the big picture. He could see where it wanted to go, but he had Waz in there going, yep, now I'll actually build what you just right, said, right. implement it. And you have to have both. Right. And quite frankly, um, there are more visionaries, actually, than there are these guys who can actually implement. Yeah. And uh, and it's pairing those up. Um, yep. to some. It's not always just two guys or two gals, right? But right. having those teams that can do both are, are, are things that I've seen um, that are similar in the businesses that are that are working as opposed to that old school mentality of oh they're going to expect me to know and do everything right. right it just most people see that through see right through that now right, right. especially with the transparency of just our our world right, right. Um, people are going to find you out you don't need to know everything or be everything right um, but relationships with those who do who can compliment you that is I believe where success and I think success in life comes from is. Um, having the right relationships. Absolutely. No, I I completely agree. We, even when I look at, you know, in speaking of that, I wonder if there's some, you know, because there is a lot of, one of the things I struggled with when I was working in my corporate gigs, and these this was at startups too, yep. so theoretically, I mean, most people think, okay, if you are a more kind of open person, I, you know, so going to our man, yeah. Jordan Peterson. Yep. JP. JP. This is a second shout out. I can't wait. That's maybe that's one of my life goals yeah. is to if I could have him, if I could actually sit down with Jordan Peterson. I have met him. I shook his hand. You know, I paid an extra fee to shake his hand, take a picture. With You've him. dead. You've but I uh, uh, love that guy. But he he talks about how you know you need the creative side. Kind of. So I'm I'm going with this in the because he talks a lot about the personality types, yep. right? Then you have the openness openness to experience that side of of the personality, and I think a lot of times that correlates more to that visionary is kind of what I thought of when right. you said that. And uh, then you have those that need to be, and then when you talk about the execute executors, but yeah, those getting stuff yep. done um, and, you know, implementing whatever, whatever those plans are, you need that. And that's a that high conscientiousness, right? That's right. that focus. It's that laser. If you can get a combo of those two things, okay, you're, it's the magic formula. Right. But the, a lot of times in the in that corporate structure if you are a highly open person Mm -hmm. in creativity okay you have like the artwork creative Mm -hmm. music which is wonderful but then i think entrepreneurs there's a there's a creativity there right and most people are going to be fairly more open in personality that are that are starting things and if you have that type of personality and you find yourself in a corporate gig i think that's those are the those are the people that are most unhappy in that hardcore structure. Yeah. And cause they don't have that freedom just to express and tinker with ideas and kind of execute on things or you have a new idea and they're like, yeah, we'll worry about that yeah, you know, right. later. Or that's, you know, you want to do a podcast cause you think it might help you find additional investors or whatever it is mm-hmm. that let's, let's two out of the box. Let's, you know, it, uh, let, let's keep it down. So the, did you ever work a, like when you started your career, did you ever work a, in it for a big company? Were you entrepreneur um, out of the gate? I, you know what? I, I was, uh, I did work for a big company for about uh, two years. Um, and so I was, um, you know, you know, bottom, bottom of the bottom for about a year and actually, um, you know, kind of worked myself into a, a management position just after a year and did that for about another year and a half. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm glad I did. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was like, I learned a ton. Um, I learned the most about myself and, and, uh, 
uh, thought that, oh yeah, that manager role, like, especially as a young 20 right. something, oh, like yeah. this is what I wanted, Get that promotion, um, you know, bro. and, and, and realize with, with, within, <laughs> you know, what I was doing, um, you know, after thinking I loved it, realize, gosh, this just doesn't really fit right. my personality. Some of the things you talked about that, that openness. Um, and so it, I, I didn't do it long, but, it, but it did help me realize that for my own path, um, it, you know, it wasn't going to work great. And, uh, and, and then, you know, went certainly the entrepreneur route and, and, and opened up our own firm. But, um, you know, I think it's, it's just re- recognizing where your strength is. You know, I, I, we do have some people we do work with that are, that are in very structured organizations and, and man, they just thrive. Like they, right. they that's where their sweet spot is. And, the, and, and it's, you know, super, super, uh, crucial that the business has that person. Um, right. but you just got to know where you're at. Right. Yeah. And, and I found, and you found probably a lot of people listening or watching this aren't that person. Cause they don't really seek after the conversations you and I are having today. Right. Right. It's, right. it's just a little bit too far out of the box. Um, uh, but thank goodness they are there. Right. It takes, it takes a lot of people to make this world go around. Yeah, no. And I, and that's why I think it's just finding that alignment, <clears throat> yeah. right? Cause f- figure out, you know, who you are, right. understand where your strengths are, what you like to do. And I think a lot of the, a lot of times people though, there's a, well, maybe let's talk about that. Cause I think to start your own thing, cause I, you know, I would say that I didn't have the cojones mm-hmm. early enough to just mm-hmm. go do something. Yeah. And I always felt like I wanted to. Now I moved into the startup world, which I, I will say does give you, especially the younger the company, there's right. a lot more freedom. And then you also can get equity. Right. So a piece yeah. of ownership. So if you're not owning a company, the next best thing is a piece of ownership, yep. which it, which is great. But the the you know, what are your thoughts on kind of that risk taking mentality if someone is kind of Hey, I don't know that I'm totally happy with what I'm doing. I'm not sure this is this is built for me, but I have either I don't have an idea. The, always the thing is I don't have an idea. Yep. And then they say execution's everything, but I used to think, well, I don't even have the idea to execute on. So yeah, the, right. the, that was my thing. So uh, you know, what what do you have to say to that? To write to the I'm not happy. I don't think this is a good fit for me, right? So yep. it's talking about what fits for you. Now now what do I do? Yeah, I think it's a great, great question. I think I think we take risks no matter what. It's just, do we classify it as a risk, right? So if I take the, okay, I don't love this, but it's safe, and I could be here for you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, right? Which doesn't happen very often anymore, right. but, but, but if that were to be there, um, that, that seems like the safe, no risk piece. But right. really, I think there's a lot of risk in that because you are risking that, am I really still gonna be happy? So you're risking your, your happiness or fulfillment. Yep. Um, and, and and granted, it's it's a gradual right, but there's risk in that. Um, you're risking your future into someone else's hands, i.e., the business, the owner of that business, right? Versus, okay, I'm going to take a risk, which seems just like a steeper cliff, right? Right? It's just a quicker risk, right? right? Um, although I do like fell, fell fast, right? Right. Uh, yep. I, I like that mentality. Yep. Um, you know, know if you're going to fell and and move on to the next thing. Yeah. But. Uh, that that it's just a little bit steeper cliff, but you've got you've got risk either way. And so the way I look at it is, um, you know, try if you are ready to take that step, right? If there's someone saying, okay, I'm ready to just jump out there and make it happen, um, just find the the level of risk. I think depends on what is your capacity to control your success in that endeavor, right? right. If I'm going into something that I know nothing about. Right, I'm I'm starting ground right. zero, and I just really don't know anything about it. Right? Um, could I succeed? Yes, um, but my capacity had better grow really quickly. Right. But if I have a passion about something, there'll be a lot to learn in any business. Right. But I have, if I have a passion about something, and there's something I won't know everything about it. But if I know something within that business that I know is my skill set and that I can control, um, I think you're going to work no matter what. You're going to work hard, whether right. you're for someone or for yourself. Yeah. Right? But where can you work hard that you can control what that return is better than anywhere else, yep. right? It's the whole idea, I think, of, you know, with, with what you're doing with real estate. Um, as we talk to people about, you know, they're building their portfolios and many want real estate. And then there are those out there like, I just don't understand real estate. So I want to go here. I want to go here. The business owner says, I get my business. Well, the reason the, his business is his best investment is because he can control right. his loss or return better than anywhere else. Yep. Right. Yep. If, if if he puts his money into the market, right? There's things we can do, but he can't control that. Yep. He can control what he can control. So I think with that risk, make sure you know what you can control, 
and then control that and figure out where you need to bring someone else to control the other risks. Yep. Um, and, you know, just know that it's it's inherent there, but at the end of the day, um, you know, unless you're in a specific situation where you just can't fail, um, you know, failure and success are part of the same process, Yep. right? Until it's the final one, which means you're done, right? right? And that may not even be a failure. That may just mean, well, check that off the box. That wasn't me, I'm on to the next thing. If you're dying inside already, yeah. you're gonna die. Right. right. Like, so, right. so why not just rip that band aid off? And it's not like you have to throw caution to the wind. No. I think it's a little bit easier the younger you are, yeah, right? Your responsibilities. Yep. You, for me, at, you know, I was, I'm 40 now, so I must have been, I kind of had this epiphany maybe around 37, 38. Yep. But that, ha- that was like a two year process of planning every right. step ahead of time, knowing that I wasn't going to continue with what I was doing. Right. right? And it, four kids that whole thing, I have to make sure you can still provide there. So it's almost like instead of dying a slow death. Now, I enjoyed a lot of what I did. I don't have regrets. I think I, it got me to where I am. So you know, no regrets moving forward, but take the risk early. You have less yeah. to lose. Yeah, uh, yeah. Def- <laughs> definitely easier to burn the boats. Right. Right when right. when when there's not anybody else coming on the boat with you, right? Right or or anybody that you really are deeply connected to. Whereas, like you say, and if you if you've got a family, you're older, like you might want to phase this, or you might want to side hustle, or you want you just you make sure that you're kind of building the opportunities yeah. beforehand. And you better know why you want to do it, right? Because I remember reading the book. Another awesome book I read a long time ago was Rework. I don't know if you've heard of this one. I've heard of it, but I haven't read it. Yeah. I can't even remember the guy's company. Really great book. But it kind of just talks about like, and even our guy, Gary V. Yep. Shout yep. out. I'll never hear it, but whatever. <laughs> Love giving shout outs. That's right. The, you know, it's the, okay, so you have your day job. So what are you doing? Okay, yeah, I've heard him do this little rant where it's like, mm-hmm. okay, what are you doing? Uh, okay, you have a family. Okay, so you spend a couple hours with your family. And then, and then what are you, you know, wh- what are you doing from nine to one in the morning? Yep. Well, you know, that's a good point. Are you, put, are you just going back to the Netflix? You see, you know, so I'm so busy. I got this corporate job. I have all these pressures. So I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, watch the new season of Hard Knocks, which shout out to Hard Knocks. I love that show. But but the Lions uh, this but, season. I know. Like, yeah. It's a horrible team. But I already got pumped up. They have, uh, who's the running back? He played at BYU, uh, right? Uh, 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 Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams. Yeah. So um, he's, a, he's a quirky guy, funny guy. He got me fired up. And then, the, I, every, anyways, I love that show. But the... But what are you doing in those hours, right? Yeah, Do you right. flip flip on a show and just eat another bowl of cereal, which is exactly what I did last night? <laughs> yeah, it's but gotta I, happen sometimes. Right? I already spent the day on my own business, right? I'm not I'm not uh, conflicted between the two, uh, but I'm always I'm always thinking about it. But right, what are you doing at those hours? Mm-hmm. So you've got the time, yep. but you have to. So let me ask you that then. So you have to you have to know why you're doing mm-hmm. something. I guess is the point yep. because if you're just like, well, I just wanna I just want a Rolex or I want to yeah. you know be on a on an I want to fly private is probably right. not enough. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think in terms of like having enough time, so there's two pieces I want to answer to that question. Um, I think it's about, I think it's about managing your energy, not managing your time. Sure. Okay. Right? That's a good point. So, um, because we, we all, we all have, I mean, time's a very set structured thing, right? And, and something that's really man-made in mm-hmm. terms of time itself. Right. Um, right. And so, yeah, we can manage it. And, and, and I know this for myself. Um, I get into some trouble when I start managing time, right? Because if you say I have four hours for this project, how long do you take to do it, right? At least four hours right. or more, right? right? Um, as opposed to I'm, I'm going to manage my energy. So I know where my energy needs to go or where it needs to be the highest to get X, Y, or Z done. I want to manage the energy to get that done. And then if I have some left, I'll come here or whatever. So I, yeah. I think that's huge, right? And that's yeah. why we do need to recharge our batteries and we need to do all yeah. these things that, 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 you know, that keep that, um, you know, at the forefront. Um, and then the other thing in terms of like the why, right? Mm-hmm. And because there, there's a ton of literature out there and it's kind of be, it's almost been like a buzzword of like, know your why, know right. your why. Right. But I do start think, with why. Right, start with yeah. why, Simon Sinek, the whole thing. Yeah. But I think it's important because, um, you know, whatever you, if you're starting something, uh, there's a lot of that early momentum, right? Your honeymoon phase. Mm-hmm. And so like, you don't even have to try to get stoked up about it. You're just excited, right? right? Again, right. it's the honeymoon phase. Right. Like you're ready to go. Yep. Um, but once you actually start having to do the day-to-day and the stuff that's not sexy and the stuff that's hard, uh, your why better be strong enough to hold up against that because there'll be other things that you'll want to do. Yep. Um, and if it's just to, hey, I want the Rolex or I want... 
you've been there. Um, we all have. We've all done that to some point. I don't even think right. it's it's. I don't even think it's a, a bad idea to have. Hey, he, you know, uh, along the way, here's 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 a carrot that, sure. that I'm putting. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Great. But if that's it, you find you get it, and you go, that's awesome. And then ten seconds later, it's like I don't feel any different. Right. Right. I'm right. Now what? It's all about the journey. It's all about it's all about the journey. So yeah. the process you got it. You've got to you've got to find that the um, uh, the happiness advantage. Don't know if you've read that yep. book. Yeah, I've read um, that one. Yeah. Right. The 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 idea there, and, and and there's been it's more than just a theory. There's a lot of science behind in that book. Yeah. Behind the fact that which comes first, you know, being successful and achieving goals or being happy. And that book talks about you you've got to choose to be happy first. Right. Then the success and you know the achievement follows, but you're already happy, right? right? As opposed to when I get here, gosh, if I just get to this income level, or once I get married, or once I graduate, or right. once I get that first liquidity event, right. then I will be. And then it happens, and you go, God, because you haven't become right. anything different, right? Right? You've just gotten gotten something new. So I think that's huge in the why. Uh, totally. Yeah. That. Yeah, two things came to mind. One is, yeah, the you have to know and you have to have really thought about it because, mm -hmm. for example, with starting what I'm what I'm doing, there's you know it, you know this. There's yeah. just days like what what am I doing? What am I, doing? I actually ask my, every time I play golf, I say what am I doing with my life? I always say that. Ask this <laughs> to myself. Maybe I just play less golf. But the uh, the this idea of why am I doing this? But if I know why, and I just takes a minute to go and okay, what I've I've written these things down, or I've thought about these things so many times, like oh, okay, I want uh, you know I want my money working for me. Mm -hmm. I want passive income. I like building teams. I'm excited mm -hmm. about where this can go. I like the people. You know, so so wherever your your whatever your why is, if you are able to recall it, yeah, right. Then it then it keeps you going. That but you said another thing. Have you heard of it goes by like Dr. Joe Dispenza. Is this his yeah. name? Mm -hmm. You've heard yeah. of this guy. I have. Yeah. Have, so his, his is really interesting where mm -hmm. you, uh, instead of thinking about the, um, he does the, the meditation stuff, mm -hmm. but instead of thinking about, we'll go, uh, by the way, I don't fly in a private jets mm -hmm. yet. Yep. I'll yet. finally be happy when I, <laughs> when I get it. <laughs> You, you heard his why. When I got my G6, actually, I tell it to my wife all the time. It's like, now we can finally be happy. And uh, we, But I actually say it to my kids, too, because like just a reminder, yeah. kind of a opposite reinforcement. Yep. Well, clearly, it's yep. not what makes us happy. But the the idea, though, of not thinking of the things, or but thinking of the goals, thinking of the why, thinking of why you're doing it, and then actually trying to, if I'm, if I'm re-encapsulating what he kind of preaches, is is you put yourself in the state as mm -hmm. if you already have it. Yep. And then what that elicits is almost like a gratitude yeah. for it. And then you're li then you're kind of already have the feelings and then you bring the happiness to right. now, the gratitude to now. Right. And then it, those things be are, are more, you're more able to go and then kind of work towards them. And right. he uses words like manifest and yeah, you know, it gets right. a little. Yeah. It, it, and I think like some of those things, that's where it can kind of turn people off. Right. And, right. and, and, and I've had to come in, in my life. Right. And I think, uh, you know, wisdom will, will, will come even more as, you know, more experience and, and, and as, right. and, and as, as I get older, but it used to be, I'd read a book and it's like, okay, that's either like, that's gospel truth or it's, you know, and it, it right, just, right. I, if I read something, I got to believe everything that was there right. rather than, okay, this works for me. This doesn't. Right. Yeah. So like you talk about the Joe, Joe Dispenza and sometimes the language that's used and they go, that sounds a little too mystic to me. That yeah. sounds a little too fluffy, yes. right? Whereas it's like, I, I've learned, I love a lot. I don't necessarily prescribe to some of the language or the way it was said, but I, I definitely believe that like if we if we want something and we in our mind have, have put it there long enough, yep. right? And we've envisioned it uh, vividly enough, right? And, and like he talks about like almost, I'm closing my eyes here, but like filling it, right? And all yeah. those things. Um, but, what I don't believe is you do that and it's enough. Like, right. You, there's still massive action. You got, you got right. the Grant Cardone's out there. that yeah. are like almost the whole other side of like 10 X, everything, your, 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 your goals, your, your, your processes, your, um, effort and just make it happen. Right. Right. Um, and I think it's like, you know, it's blending those worlds together, yep. but you definitely have to take massive action on that. But if you don't have that vision, you're not getting that. Like, yeah. how do you ever know if you yeah. ever got anywhere you wanted to go? Right. 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 So, right. No, um, I, I'm with you, by the way, because uh, Dr. Joe, I mean, this happened to me today. So, I'm the same. I'm, yeah. I'm, my thing is, okay, if a lot of people are talking or if I hear really yeah. positive things, yeah. you know what? I'm going to go jump in. 
no. and know that even uh, this might be even a Tony Robbins thing. Yeah. So we're like, this is too geeky, all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. But the, but even he says, look, if, I think he talked about reading all the books he read, yeah. right? Yeah. He's like, if I get one thing, one idea out of this book that helps me improve or get to where right. I want to go, then it's, you know, it's totally worth it. Even if the other 99% were trash right. and I'm not actually, so I bet it was funny cause I was, I've been doing the Joe, just dis- uh, one of it. I bought the whatever yeah. I've been doing, yeah. listening to the lectures, yeah, the same thing, yeah. doing the meditations. And then today I'm just going to say it. And this is a spoiler alert. If you get to, uh, I'm on like the ninth hour of mm-hmm. listening to this stuff. He talks about, you know, these beings coming in and, you know, taking out tumors from people. And, and part of me is like, boy, that one for me, that was yeah. a little bit of a stretch for me. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, but you know what? I've been doing these meditations. Yeah. Here's what I will yeah. say is as I've done them and you start to live that day as if you are wherever you mm-hmm. think you want to yeah. go, the days go great yeah. and great things happen yeah. during the day. Yeah. You, you put yourself in a state where you, you've controlled how you feel. Right, right, exactly. You, you've realized that to many degrees outside of some mental illnesses and things, we control whether or not we're happy. Right, right, exactly. And whether or not we feel grateful. And what's what's no joke, and what it, I'm, it, and I actually don't even want to. I don't even want to make, make it sound like I'm making fun of it because I may be taking it out of context and that type of thing. Because in all reality, we know our mind can make us sick. Right, we yeah. know that if we have. Uh, uh, crippling anxiety, and this is and this is not belittling any of this. I've gone through you know my own stuff, but if you, if you're living in a state of anxiety every day of your life, you die younger, right? Uh, more, you have more chronic illnesses, and and again, I'm not saying that it's anybody's fault mm-hmm. for that, but for those that can work through those issues, and we see that, so we know if your thoughts can make you sick, mm-hmm. and we also know that our thoughts can heal us because there's the such thing as a placebo effect right right because you t- then that that's what clicked for me i was like you know what this and i think what he's trying to do is help us elicit what the placebo effect does but help us be in more control of eliciting those positive transformations without having to take a sugar pill and thinking that it's right. tricking ourselves into doing it right if that makes sense right so. no i think i think it's it's uh again it's it, it's great to take you know, from a variety of, of, of places and things, what works within your framework of, of where your values are right. and what, what can make you better and, and offer more to others. Um, I think uh, my, my wife, um, you know, she's like, like many of you out there, she's, she's the better half in our marriage, right? For sure. And, uh, For sure. and she, she routinely, um, you know, she says we, like her and I, but she's, she's the, uh, the wise one that does it. Right. Um, well, okay, here's going to be our family theme for the next quarter or the next year right and we found one once it, it lasted for probably almost two years because it just it really hit different with our family and that was what you focus on grows right right um and and um where you know, focus goes energy flows there you go right the exactly yeah, yeah. And, and and the funny thing is is the context that that one came from what you focus on grows um comes from a great guy named russell nelson some of you guys will know that okay, but you yeah. know a, a, a religious leader that i respect a ton For sure. um and and the idea there was whether you're focusing on something negative right or positive right or neutral that thing will grow right in your mind yep. and therefore grow in your life in actuality. And right. it was a great lesson that she decided to focus on that the kids learned like, man, that thing that I was just harping at the kid was mad about this or that. And Hey, was it really that big of a deal? Right. But you spent the last three weeks focusing on it and right. it was, or vice versa. You focused on something that you really wanted to see happen and it happened. So where our focus goes, yep. you know, that that's where the growth is going to happen good or bad yep. right and yep. and and so you might as well choose it to be something that we want to have happen uh, totally. if, if that's where we're going to focus well the uh it's also a lot, I, what came to my mind was when you're snowboarding i don't mm-hmm. i think it's the same for skiing yeah. but if uh like if you're going through a bunch of trees for example yep. if i look at the tree I'm going to hit it, Bingo. right? So you can't, yep. you have to focus on where you want to go yep. as opposed to where you're headed, if yep. that makes sense. Yep. So I've hit many trees, snowboarding, luckily no major injuries, but the the focusing on where the pathway that I want to take, even though it's going to be really tight and I'm going really fast or whatever it is, it's like just, just focus on where you want to go, so which I think is kind of the same the same yeah. concept. Cut to Smitty taking some big air. Bang. Yeah. I, I would say more commonly what I see with Smitty is it's on the golf course. <laughs> I got to go over that tree, and what does he do? He hits the tree because it was focused on the tree and not you know where the ball. I'm saying that for all of us Dude, golfers. My, 
I'll I say that for all of us golfers, uh, but it's funny. Yes. You, know, you can't land it next to the pin, but you can see where the trouble is. Right. And land it there with no problem. We know that. Hap- I mean, <laughs> all, the lessons that golf provides yeah. us in our life, it's the same thing. Like, uh, I was just so we play golf at the same place. And uh, shout out to Riverside. Riverside Country Club. Let's get it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the, uh, the, it's number, it's number nine. Mm-hmm. The water's on the right. Yep. And where does everybody end up yep. on that hole? Yep. Over, either in the water. Yep. Or you get so scared of what you're going to hit, you go to the other side. Over in the trees. <laughs> from the trees. I hate that hole. But the, uh, that's always my case. So, yeah. and I, uh, luckily I, I missed, it didn't go in the water by about a foot yesterday. But the, uh, um, but that's the same concept. Yep. It's the same concept, right? You're just focused on worried about where you're going to miss as opposed to where you're trying to get to. Yep. And I've hit a lot of trees. I've hit a lot of trees. Golfing. Luckily not snowboarding. So here's some, some things we have in common is we have started businesses we work with high net worth individuals Mm -hmm. but we also have kids wives families and we have other interests and when he says wives he has one and i have one let's be very clear about this just to clarify especially (laughs) (laughs) we uh i'm just just saying no this is great because um (laughs) oh this is two things because i was so this is funny because i was golfing with um partner yesterday so we did a deal with another firm in um albuquerque shout out to cinnamon tree and a blue field but the we we were golfing together and as we're golfing i say that my my great grandpa's name was calvin rawlings let's put up a picture of calvin on this editor because he was a stud so he was an attorney here in salt lake and uh he was actually a uh, i say actually a democrat because even there were more Democrats back in the day, and this isn't a political show. I'm not saying I'm either one. I'm not disclosing anything here, but he was kind of, uh, you know, uh, outnumbered as a Democrat in Salt Lake mm-hmm. City. But he was friends with like four different presidents, and he had a cool reputation. But I somehow he came up in golf, and it turns out that the guy I was golfing with, that is also his great grandpa. Wow. So basically, his daughters were, uh, you know, our grandmothers. Um, and um, so it turns out we're second cousins. And then we said, well, wait a minute. And then we made the joke that, well, it's easy to be second cousins with people in Utah if uh, there's more than one. That's why I'm clarifying. More than one wife. But this was not the case in that case either. Yeah. So we each have one wife. Okay. Yep. Can you imagine, though? I, I mean, we don't need to get out. I, I mean, the old one wife is enough thing. And I yeah. love my wife. Yeah. But, boy, I, can, I don't There's no desire on my part. No, but, you, you, you want to talk three or four wives into fact that you're going golfing today yeah i have a hard enough time no. <laughs> just kidding sweetheart i was joking we we're actually working i consider this work that's right so family mm-hmm. we each have one wife we each have multiple kids how you have five five kids yep uh so uh ha, you have other interests yep. you know well we clearly read we're well read men here actually i hope we read more than just the uh, flash of the day business books but the uh how do you balance those things? How do you kind of find the wholeness? You just mentioned meditation. You, you, yep. you know, there's, a, you know, I feel one thing I think we have in common is we both kind of have just an enjoyment for life. We like yeah. to have a good time. We work really hard. Yep. So, so what's, how, how do you find that balance in your yeah. life? Great question. Um, and, and, and I'll be honest, like I'm still seeking, right. you know, that, um, my, my, my position on that now, and it may change, right. It's mm-hmm. kind of fluid. Cause I've, I've noticed that that's something that's been fluid in my life is I don't really know that there's such thing as balance Mm -hmm. um, in in, in the way at least that we typically describe it, right? Um, And so for me, it's been um, what's worked is be where you are, Mm -hmm. right? Like if I'm I'm at home with my family, that is the most important thing right then, right? right? Um, If I'm on a business call, that is the most important thing at that moment, right? if I happen to be standing over a shot, even though I'm an amateur playing with my buddies at that moment, right. that is the most important thing right. that's happening because that's what my focus is on. So I think it's just being where you are. Um, if, 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 you know, if you're at football practice tonight at 6.30 because you're helping coach your son's team, right. 
your most important thing right then is not to be thinking about the deal that, that you've got to do tomorrow. And right. you know what? I, I, I'm saying I know what I think I should be doing. I'm not saying I always do it, right? right. I'm not always right. Where, right. I, oh, where, sure. where I am. But I think right then, running uh, you know, that, that counter option play and making sure that who you're watching is doing their part is the most important thing. So that's for me what what I'm, I'm where I'm at right now is is the balance is simply being where you are, uh, and that's I think that's what brings uh, presence. That's what brings yeah. clarity. That's yeah. what brings focus. And I think that's where the fulfillment is. When I find right. that I'm not being fulfilled, it's it's because I'm not present or I'm not where my feet are. And as right. such, I realize I'm just not getting anything out of this. Uh, I, I do that oftentimes. I, I feel like um, uh, you know <laughs> I've got I've got ADD in meetings, and I'm going. Right. I got nothing out of this because I was anywhere but in this meeting, right? right? Or right. Geez, I, I completely spaced off in that conversation. Shame on me. I got nothing out of it because I was somewhere else. So right. I think that's what balance right. is to me. No, I'm with I'm with you. Right? If your mind is in one place and your body's in another, yeah. then you're there's going to be a lack of. Uh, wholeness a lack of presence right. and that yeah because the satisfaction comes from from being there and i think too that you know i was thinking about this and i am i mean you know this more than anybody i'm no saint uh i mean <laughs> yeah, you're right go yeah go on uh no uh, smitty's the man uh but the so for example f- the football coaching thing that they they said hey is there anybody that would be willing to help out and i was like sure you know well I'll, i can help out what i didn't realize is just the time commitment, right? Because it's it, especially before game start, we're doing practice every day for two hours. And but that being said, you know, for example, it's like I'm always thinking, you know, work, and especially if you're a hustler, you're always thinking of, okay, how do I? And that's good to have that drive, I think. Right. But you gotta take a breather sometimes, and and also you just don't know where you're gonna find, you know, the joy is right there under under you. So and I remember, you know, what for me, what I had to do is I had to dig deep, and I just went back, thought of all the football coaches I've had yeah. that had an impact on my life. And I'm talking little league, right? Yeah. I'm not like you know, a celeb, but I even, those coaches, they probably were thinking about work or they had a, a right. lot of other things going right. on and they took time to give a kid uh, you know, a, a pat on the helmet or whatever and right. give a little bit of advice. I don't remember any of the coaching stuff, but I was thinking back, you know, I have a, I have a warm place, a special place in my heart for these guys that were coaches. And then I kind of forgot, so I was just being really selfish, just thinking, this is two hours of my day every day. I'm not at home. I, yeah. I'm with one kid, but you know, and there's a lot of stuff going on. But you also don't know where you're going to have impact in life, right? Right? You just That's don't a great know. Point. And actually, so this is one thing I love about you is actually when we're golfing together, because that's usually our time we spend. This yeah. is our first time maybe I saw you in the <laughs> store once. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But off the course. Uh, yeah, off the course. But, uh, you know, we've had some great conversations where, you know, if, uh, you know, we weren't opening up and just talking to each other about yeah. life and being being human on this earth at this time, there's a cool connection that was built there that, yeah. you know, if I was constantly thinking about the next thing or what I could get out of you yeah. or whatever those connections probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah, absolutely. So. I'm, I'm, uh, I love, I, I love that, that, that you said that. I'm just, I'm a huge believer, um, that we become, um, the sum of the books we've read and the people we surround ourselves with. Right. That, that's, that's who we become, right? right. Cause that's where our focus is. And, right. and for me, um, you know, I look at, at my life and even business, like my, I've, I've said this, I, you know, it, it came to me a few years ago, like my currency, is relationships. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm at at this point in time. It's not even. It's not even the dollar. Um, even in business, it's not right. even the dollar that comes from those relationships. Right. It's it's the relationships. That's my currency because that's where I find the greatest fulfillment. Right. And the greatest, you know, just happiness and joy and fun. Right. Is in the relationships. I'm a relationship guy. And yes. It took me a while, even within my business, to realize what do I love the most about yep. my business. All the things that we do. For me, it's a relationship. Yeah. So I'm known even within my partners. Like I'm the relationship guy simply right. because that's where my that that's where my fulfillment is. And because of it, that's that's where more of the natural ability is. You know, the one thing that you can do mm-hmm. that doesn't take your energy but actually fuels it. Right. If you can find what that is and right. figure out how to ha, how to marry it with with a monetary piece, yeah. great. If you can't, still find a way to do it and benefit the world. But um, for me, that's 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 what the currency is yeah. and, and it's led to, you know, some monetary, uh, um, you know, opportunities and fulfillment. But even if it didn't, mm-hmm. I just, I, li- I love the, ro- the opportunity or yeah. the, the relationships. That's no. where, 
that's where the fulfillment is, you know, friends, family, etc. Yeah. Well, I, I could sense by, as you were talking about it, your energy level was yeah. cranking up a little yeah. bit. So, uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. And, and once you find that to, to keep going there, but then I think the other side too, even if you're an introvert, yeah. having <clears throat> good relationships right. is everybody needs it. Everybody right. needs a friend. Everybody mm-hmm. needs to have, um, those that they, you know, cause you have to get, you know, it's a, it's a back and forth. Right. right. And it's a way to kind of, um, even little micro sacrifices of, of just listening to somebody can, well, if you're like me, sometimes listening yeah. is a sacrifice yeah, just yeah, right. you like to just go, but, um, you need those relationships. I think it, it means a lot. It means a lot to, uh, to others involved and you forget your impact you can have the, yeah, I'm with you on the balance. It's maybe balance is the wrong word. It's just yeah. trying to be whole and present. And, yeah. and I think when you're present, your body or your mind or a combination of the two will, will kind of, or and if you believe in a higher power, if, yeah. you, if you're trying to be present, um, you know, these powers that be will let you know, you know, even if you, this is where you need to be right now, yeah. or this is where you need to adjust your focus, or right. these are, you know, adjustments you can make. I don't think there's so much good or bad. It's just like, okay, we were going this track. We need to settle it down a bit and focus more on, on this area. So right. what didn't we cover? You know, um, other than any of your short game secrets, like I, you know, whatever. Hinge and hold, Phil Mickelson. Let's go. The hinge and hold. That's that's what I like. I, I do it right handed, um, as opposed to the left. But you know, yeah, I think that's a great that's great advice. Uh, <laughs> short game. Oh my gosh, what are you talking about? You are the wizard. You know, um, I I I've been known to save a few shots with the short game, but I, you know, it's it's correcting those other pieces. Here's the thing. You know what I love about a lot of high net worth people mm-hmm. also love golf. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is uh, that that's a great way to fuse. And I'm not going to make money off of golf, yeah. but if you really love something and you put yourself in a position where other people, you know, you're around like-minded people that also love it, there's probably opportunities there. I mean, I, I'm sure you've had many, well, you know, well, we, we did a lot of dealings together yeah. and it was all through email and golf course. Yep. It, 100%. Right. Or are we just justifying playing golf? It could be both. Okay, um, it probably is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but, but I would go back. You know, truly, like I, I, I love to play golf, and I, and I, and I, you know, I've known that for years. Right. And it really was a very conscious decision to say, okay, I love golf and I love relationships. Right. Right. Um, well, golfing and having four or five hours with somebody that 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 I don't know well, and so oftentimes it's whether it's just. Typically, I don't even know if it's going to be a business relationship, right? right. But hey, I'm going to form a relationship here, and and you know, with my business being you know in the financial services space, something that everybody deals with or needs help with to some degree is money, right? And right. so, oftentimes, those turn into that. But um, I've never, uh, at least in the past five or six years, because it was a conscious, conscious decision, um, unless it was brought up by the other individual, will I talk about business on the course? Mm-hmm. I'll make a relationship, right. and then if we decide, you know, that person goes, hey, you know, I'd love to talk more about X, Y, or Z. It's away from the course or they want to talk about it on the course. Great. But for me, it's let's play golf and get to know each other. Um, yep. And it really has afforded a lot of those opportunities. It truly has yep. doing something I already enjoy doing. Right. So I build a relationship. I played the sport that I like to, at this point in my life, like to play more than any other. And it has formed, you know, um, a lot of business opportunities and those that haven't been, I've just made a lot of friends um, from it. And sometimes yep. the irony is, that friend that we may not, we may do nothing off of the course, uh, you know, business wise, mm-hmm. but that person knows somebody who they'll send over and go, you should go talk to Jesse. Right. Oh, you better and, believe. and I don't expect that, yeah. but it happens yeah. just because it's just, it's the nature of, yeah. of, you know, just, you know, don't, don't, don't try to get something out of something, but it, it comes right. back somehow, right. some way. No, I agree. I agree. Well, and you better believe, right? If anybody with a tax question, it's like I got a guy for you. So, right? True, so you, you right? So yeah. that that speaks for itself. So the um, so by the way, we have the same. So we both get lessons occasionally yeah. from the the same guy. Yep. And I'm gonna have that guy on. Love it. Who would, he'd be great, wouldn't he? Oh, he would be. Yeah. <laughs> be I promise you'll have some good one-liners anyway. Hundred right? uh, percent. May may need some editing on that. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> we'll uh, but, uh, <laughs> maybe, but maybe he make, brings it out 
it'll be all great. out in me. Yeah, but I thought it'll that'd be, be fun because yeah. who doesn't want to hear? He's got some cool stories. He, Lots he's of cool got stuff. some fun, cool golf stories. Yeah. But um, but yeah, well, well, hey man, I feel like this is a a perfect spot to wrap it up. Awesome. And uh, I appreciate our friendship, man. Hey, likewise, uh, love being with you. Thanks for having me on. I've had a blast. It's fun to just sit here and chat with my boy Switty, Smitty off off of the course. Um, off the course. You know, you're uh, you know this this. You've been even more successful at this than you are hitting fairways. <laughs> I'm way more charming uh, in person. It's off true. the course. We talk a little bit about the company. Do, just tell me. And so this is for everybody that may listen to this. How can people find you? Websites, emails, Absolutely. social media. Where, where can we find you if we want to get in get in contact? Awesome. Um, Cornerstone Capital Group is uh, is the name of our group. Um, you can you can Google us online. Um, you know, re- reach back out in this podcast. I will tell you. Um, you know, generally, uh, you know, we we most of the time work with people based off of um, you know referral from current you know uh, client base. We kind of have a specific, and honestly, it's it's less about. Oh, you got to have this net worth. It used to be. I'll mm-hmm. be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, up until about two, three years ago, it kind of, kind of shut things down. To be honest with you, okay. And we were just managing, feeling like this is where we want to be. Um, I was missing the relationships, and so the new criteria was: is this someone that I'm going to enjoy working with? Okay. And do they have a need that we can we can fill? Okay. And if that uh, those criteria are met, um, because I value the relationships, and that's where the currency is. That's the client we're looking for. So by and large, there isn't a ton of marketing out there where we're going, hey, we want you, we want you, we want you. But it's more, you know, um, our, our clients or, or or just friends I have that know that about me and about the true value that our firm provides will end up saying, hey, you know what? Would you be willing to meet with so-and-so? Right. And um, you know, with, within a few minutes, I generally know, yeah, this is a good fit for, for the firm. But you can look us up online. Um, you, know, you can reach out on this podcast and, and Smitty can hook us up. But um, yeah, so if I'll say that. So, yeah. I'll say that. So, so first of all, it's, it's amazing and super honorable that all your business comes from referrals. You don't yeah. have to worry about it too much, yeah. which, is, which will make people want to work with you even more. Yes. And so if you're seeing this, whether it's through any of the social media platforms that we use, yep. You can contact me. Jesse and I obviously are playing golf together way too yeah. much, so I can yeah. I can get you introductions. Absolutely. If you can't, if they can't, but the yep. website's there. Yep. Look, and- look, you know, uh, you, you you can check things out. Uh, look me up on LinkedIn as well. Um, I check I check messages there routinely. Okay. Um, you know, and and, and it's kind of an easy way. Um, I think for Maybe both last both name parties. Though. Yeah, Sitterud. Yeah, Jesse Sitterud. S I T T E R U D. Um, uh, Norwegian uh, descent. Uh, if you meet a Sidrud, we're related. There's only one string of us. Uh, ancestors changed their name, uh, last name when they came over here. Oh. So, um, but you know, that way, I, I, it's kind of an easy way to vet each other out uh, when you're yep. when you're sending those messages to see if we really are, you know, a good fit. Um, we're more in less is more. We'd rather have you know less new clients, but with good relationships that we really feel like we can manage and bring value to instead of being spread out. That's kind of where we are, more of a boutique um, firm. So that's a, that's a good way to vet it out anyway. Okay. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. And so you've built an amazing business. Yeah. Where, where are we going from here? Yeah, great question. Um, honestly, uh, at this and this, this may sound like a very basic answer because honestly... <laughs> I'm at a pretty basic spot in this in this uh, at this point. I I, I simply want to build um, more deep, um, real relationships. And so, if that means over the course of the next ten years, um, uh, you know, from a business, and I mean that on a business standpoint, mm-hmm. I want I want relationships, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if that means that over the next ten years, um, there's uh, you know, uh, five hundred or a thousand, or there's 50 mm-hmm. new relationships. Uh, I just, I, I want that currency more than anything else. And then with that, a um, uh, big thing for me is, um, you know, probably one of my number one drivers, you know, when you ask about the why, um, outside of, of when I talk about the personal point, right? There's mm-hmm. there's some values we bring in our core values from the business, you know, our, our you know, what what is, you know, our mission statement and mm-hmm. our values, you know, to bring value to others. With me personally, um, freedom of my time um, is something that, you know, if I could put a dollar amount on it, I'd spend a lot yep. to, to, to purchase that if that's what it was about. Yep. And so freedom of my time to be able to, you know, um, surf, to give back, to be with my family, yep. to, to golf, to be with my friends, whatever it is, yep. is 
so high on my priority list um, that uh, that's just a big piece of going forward is, is could we do even more with the business? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And, and we will, um, but not at the expense of having freedom of um, time and yep. choice to, of what to do with it. And so it's more, it's less is more. We'll probably bring on less, but great relationships that, that we can really bring significant value with and, and, you know, have, uh, have a, a, a deeper, um, you know, relationship with. Beautiful. Thanks, man. Awesome. Man. It's awesome.